giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. So top 10. All right, top 10. Top yeah. 10, yep. Top 10. Top of 10. So lean us off. We're going to hear about team 4338. From Evan Yuda, Hammercast Israel, it's the Falcons. 40 wins, 14 losses, and four ties. Uh, overall, they were the winners of the Israel number one district event and the Israel district championship. So if they're a solid win in event one in a close finals match three loss in their third event, um, or I'm sorry, the, the district number three event, Falcons ranked five this past weekend to, to, at the district championship in Israel. Three ties was unique for the number one, uh, or re, was unique for one event, but scores of 76, 65, and 72 um, are impressive ties nonetheless. I actually was reading that. I was wondering if ties were going to be more common um, as we progress in the season, as more well-rounded alliances get created. But the Falcons captain, the number four alliance, passed the number five and number one alliance on their way to the finals. Um, unfortunately, falling in match three, 74 to 65. But a great performance from them, and they'll be looking for more success in Detroit. Good luck to 43-38 Falcons. Um, something uh, just to point out in regards to Israel, and we have one more team uh, coming up from Israel, no spoilers there, but uh, the – if you didn't get a chance to watch the Israel District Championships, I mean, it was just nuts, right? You had the semi, both semis going to three, the finals going to three, uh, two red cards given out during the semis and finals mm -hmm. and stuff like just craziness going on uh, for that. So, the, you know, the in my opinion, I think uh, 4338, I think exemplified at the Israel District Championships specifically uh, that they were uh, probably the best team out there. Uh, their uh, alliance partners uh, performed well, um, but I think 4338 really rocked it. You know, and of course our teams Bumblebee and Orbit in uh, 15, uh, 15 was it 1577, 1574 and stuff all rocking it. But uh, 4338, I think coming through and just showing uh, how awesome they were uh, in that event with some awesome strategy as well too. Um, something I just want to make a quick comment of is uh, somebody said that there's a team that was in the top 10 in the region recap uh, that might not be here. And keep in mind, the region recap this past week, if you watched it, those were only four people who voted from those regions. So if you voted in the FRC top 25 this past week, we asked you to self-identify which region you most identify with. And when we aired the region recap, we actually showed those that were voting from that region. So the Top 10 does not translate to the top 25. We will post all the results uh, after the show so you can see all that. But the uh, these are the global rankings for things versus the uh, region recap. We only showed the local uh, people who voted that identified from that area. So these which are global rankings, yeah. which are different. Yeah, so it is uh, a bit different uh, in that as well. So. I think that's great because then it gives people, you know, from that area who know these teams who probably were maybe watching, yeah. um, you know, kind of some more weight, which I think is great. For sure. All right, let's do it. All right, moving moving along. In the ninth <laughs> spot is Team 2046. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. From Maple Valley, Washington, and Tahoma Senior High School, it's Bear Metal. They have an overall record of 64-6, and six, and they were the double gold Kling Bling winners. Um, at West Valley, winners at Auburn, and this past weekend would take the Pacific Northwest District Championship. Um, just an outright incredible season for 2046. I would argue um, they're a little high on this list, meaning that they should be ranked lower. Um, uh, considering they didn't, they they didn't even done. make it last time, so this is definitely a big improvement off of that. So, yeah. So this past weekend at uh, Pacific Northwest District Championship, they had four unicorn matches, a 3.0 ranking score average. They would finish first, and with no surprise, take 29-10, Jack in the Bot, and uh, wrap it up with 29.07, topping out at a max of 103 on penalized. Um, I think their score is a little higher with penalties, but um, they would take the win in six matches, 24-56, or 20. 2046, excuse me, has to fight through some really heavy defense. Um, so they're going to be well prepared going to Houston Championship. So four banners through four events. Um, just amazing season from Bear Metal um, and good luck in Houston. But yeah, just um, with their robot and just, I think like I said, like the experience they get, like just really like heavy, heavy defense. And I think I talk about it a little bit later with 1678, but I mean, that's just 
just that much more work and that, that much more practice uh, just to prepare for, for championship. But yeah, incredible season for 2046. Congratulations. So uh, real quick aside, guys, I want to talk about, because this happened at uh, the Seven Rivers Regional as well, too, is that um, if you're going against an alliance here where you have 2046 and 2910, right? So 2910 is a swear bot, 2046 is not. Who do you send your defensive bot on? Because mm. I, think you, I think you send it on 2046. Which is what they, at least the, like the one match that I watched, um, that's what they did. And they just let 2910 go at it. Um, which, you know, I think, I think that's true because then you're with 2910s, like, um, elusiveness, it's going to be hard to really play effective defense in a robot that is that good, um, on the ground game with swerve yeah. drive. So I think they make the right call with it, which is why I said that about going after 2046, because at least you can disrupt that, but then you're leaving 2910 or whoever else just, for, you know, free reign. Um, but some of these, these cyclers are so fast that sometimes it's hard to kind of go back and forth between both robots down there. Um, you just kind of end up playing so, so defense on both instead of really good defense on one. But that's an interesting thought for yeah. sure. Justin, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I was going to bring it up uh, in the, the top five break as well, but just what the role of defense is in this game going forward. Uh, I, I posted in that um, in the side I wanted to talk about, like, where is the meta of this game headed? You know, at Marysville mm -hmm. in FIM a couple of weeks ago, it was a you know an unpenalized match score, 117 and 114 win for the Blue Alliance. Blue did not play defense. Red mm -hmm. sent defense. Blue still put up 117 points um, and did uh, win with three robots on offense. So I just think it's it's really interesting. Uh, I've had some discussions uh, offline, obviously, with some people from around the country about what their thoughts are, and it's kind of mixed right now. Some people think defense is going to play a huge role. Other people think it's going to go away completely. So it'll be really interesting. And in that example you showed, I don't, you know, maybe the solution is don't play defense. You know, do you build your alliance to to just purely outscore them and take your put one robot on one rocket, put one robot on the other rocket, put a you know another robot on the cargo ship, and say, you know, outscore us and see what happens. Yeah, I forget which event I was watching, but that's kind of what it was. It was just really weird. Like it was just all three, you know, three teams aside, all six teams were just playing offense, and um, just we're so used to seeing that defense. But it, it's interesting. Like I like it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I like <laughs> interesting. <laughs> um, but it's definitely like a like when there's no defense, it's definitely a different kind of game. It's kind of like, um, like recycle rush kind of all over again, you know, like, all right, mm. you know, let's see what you can do. You know, like this is, uh, which is awesome. I like also, but I also kind of like seeing who can play through defense and who can play through that. And it's kind of two different games almost when, when that happens, but I like them both. I don't know which one I kind of like more. Um, I kind of think it's a little boring when it's yeah. it's exciting, but it's a little boring when everybody's just playing the game how you know just playing the game and scoring. But yeah. um, but I do like it. I like seeing I like seeing the teams that are just lights out and can just put them up. And but it's also not exciting too. Well, here here's a here's my take on it. I think if we look at Worlds, for example, uh, or maybe even like MSC coming up or, or Ontario District Champs coming up where you have a lot of teams going, uh, I think Quals, you're going to see tons of defense. Uh, I think in Quals, because Rockets are so valuable that you're going to see that defense for it. I think by the time we get to Einstein, I actually think defense is going to lay off a little bit. Uh, unless you just have like, you know, your alliance just is not built. Like you made it through with a defensive bot. I think the meta of this game as we get into Einstein is because the field's going to be so deep that you can have three offensive robots. And maybe you just have that robot very occasionally go off and harass, right? Like yeah, they're not playing close. defense the yeah. whole time, but they're, yeah, exactly. They're going to play like, like almost as like zone offense defense yeah. uh, sort of thing. And I think that's going to be the winning combination. You know, once when we get the world set, you'll see. I, I don't know if we're going to see a, a purely defensive robot because there's so. I mean, this game accommodates so many mid to low tier teams as well too with the cargo ship that you can afford that you can find a good a good team that's going to do something like like that. And uh, I think it'll be interesting to see. I you know I, I'm still in the fence this game. I think it's a little bit boring, but it'll be interesting to see where it, where it takes us. I think you're right because I think that's what 148. Um was doing it in fit, right? They, they mm. were, they were very playing very situational defense. The other Alliance was starting on hatches first on their rocket. Um, 148 was um, faster. So they, they had most of their rocket filled with cargo. They looked at the score, looked at the time left and said, you know what, 
the two balls, you know, that we can finish this racket with, those six points are not worth uh, the havoc we can go wreak on them when they're trying to put, you know, six balls in their rocket ship. Yeah. So they just mm-hmm. peeled off and played some defense for the last 25 yeah. seconds or so and was able to essentially lock out the other team for that time. So, yeah, that's what the cool <laughs> yeah, the cool kid 625 in chat just said the same thing. So mm-hmm. I think you're right. It would probably be some hybrid um, on those lines. Like, I'm, I'm wondering um, if it'll be like a global change kind of like at a championship or if it'll be like a divisional kind of change, like seeing, like, I'm just curious to see if everybody will move one direction or like division specific, will kind of move one direction based on who's in that division. And then how yeah. Einstein may look, you know, um, in the round Robin with these different alliances that maybe did different things to get, you know, into the round Robin. So um, be really interesting. It could be, um, you know, based, you know, based on who you pick um, could be kind of quite a, uh, quite interesting how that plays out one defensive strategy i saw i thought was really cool and actually made the game i thought significantly more exciting was uh playing climb defense uh Mm -hmm. so you saw so this happened at seven rivers i don't know about other events so you had uh in the semis and finals uh you had 2041 in 1986 uh competing and you saw the starting the semis by the number five alliance where uh because 1986 and 2041 could double climb if they had enough time they actually uh, placed a robot uh, to play defense in the last little bit without getting, because you, of course you don't want to get penalized for that. Right. Right. But they were actually able to shut down that double climb and then essentially neutralize and get back into a have to climb mm. in the amount of time. Uh, so you saw uh, uh, the number uh, three or sorry, number two lines used against number one in finals as well too at seven rivers uh, where the defensive bot just harassed them long enough to prevent the double climb and then just zipped over, get it up on the level two climb and I think to me that was such a cool defensive strategy because it was almost like a chess match watching yeah. them like try to negotiate past each other that way. And to me, that was pretty exciting to see. Will they get the the double climb or was the defense good enough to prevent it? And I thought that was really cool. Nice. Awesome. Well, that was a good discussion. I like it. It was. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> we Sorry in the premature discussion there, Justin. That's my No, bad. it's okay. It's all right. I threw it in there uh, without telling anyone. Um, okay, so Mike's going to play double duty again. Glad we're able to give him a little break there. But he's going to talk about Team 3476. <laughs> From Irvine, California, it's Code Orange with an overall record of 17 and 15. They were the winners this past weekend at the Aerospace Valley Regional. So after an exit in the semifinals at the L.A. Regional, Code Orange uh, was looking to punch their ticket to champs this past weekend in Lancaster. <laughs> that's a that's a Pennsylvania. I don't know if it's Lancaster or Lancaster, uh, yeah. California. <laughs> um, they would finish 13th and be selected by the number one seed, 1678. Code, Ar- Code Orange was um, just playing at such a high level. Their turret rivals, in my, in my opinion, um, go head to head. And all right, like this would be a great discussion. Uh, turret versus turret, 3476 versus 24, uh, 254. But. Um, they're just so quick at their cycles and were able to do a rocket while 1678 was fighting through defense on the other side. Um, so kind of like what we saw, um, kind of like what we saw um, with Jack in the bot, kind of free reign. Um, 30, uh, Code, or- Code Orange had free reign on their side and were able to complete a, a um, cl- complete a rocket by themselves. Um, so they were going to win that regional and they pick up a spot at the Houston champs. Um, Code Orange has some excitement and momentum um, heading there. So congrats on Incredible Robot and good luck. So um, just in a, like just watching their matches, man, they're just so good and so fluid and their turret is just awesome. And they just, they're playing so well. well look at um, right there is a defense that just got played against them. All they do is just rotate the turret and score in the cargo yeah. ship. It was phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, it's just a really, really good looking robot. Um, and they just, they're, they play so well. So congratulations to them. It's just a great machine. And their improvement was phenomenal too. Yeah. Uh, look at look at just from I mean not not just talking about the robot. Just look at the record basis. I mean they were yeah. five and eight uh, in their first regional, yep. ranked twenty five. And while they weren't ranked as high, uh, still looking a lot better. And obviously uh, getting the uh, attraction of sixteen seventy eight uh, Citrus Circuits. And I know um, there are some uh, people wondering uh, why 1678 might have picked Code Orange over a team maybe like 5012 or something like that. And I, I think just the, the dynamics of this alliance just really shows you that uh, Citrus really knew what they are doing in picking a uh, great team in Code Orange, who has been, yeah. uh, once again, another underrated team that won a division last year. And I don't think a lot of people paid attention to him at all. And here they are looking good and now getting the recognition yeah. uh, finally in week six. And maybe like guilty of myself, it's like, oh, Code Orange, that's really interesting because of kind of like earlier in the season. But looking at this footage it's like um yeah like no wonder you picked them you know like they were just playing so well so um really really nice job to them 
All right. So moving on to our seventh ranked team. That's going to be team number 195. From Southington, Connecticut, Southington High School, it's the Cyber Knights, 43-13 and 13 overall. We're, and we're the winners of the Central New York Regional, Western and Western New England, and Hartford District events. It's always confusing when teams do regionals and district I events. I know, no, right? Teams, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, so no one's flabbergasted, I'm sure, to learn. Three events, four blue banners for 195, and they aren't close to being done yet. This past weekend in Hartford, 195 ranked fifth and was selected to the number one alliance by 230 that Mike already talked about, Gail Hawks. And along with 70 to 69, easily won the event going 6-0 in, elim- in the elimination rounds. 195 has yet to seed one, but has been the first team off the board in each of their three events, and no doubt will be looking to take the top spot. I wrote here New England District Champs, um, but I'm not sure if they're going to play the New England District Champs or not, because they already have qualified for Worlds, and I know that teams have sometimes um, decided to, to sit out the, yeah. the District Championship. But whether it's New England Champs or Detroit, good luck to Team 195, the Cyber Knights. Interesting. I don't think I've heard that before. But it has been else? done before, yeah. It yeah. has been done. But don't they have like a huge – oh, we'll have to see. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't show up on Blue Alliance, but um, – It says they will be, so I – yeah, you got me. But yeah, and they have this incredible streak to kind of defend too. They've been in the finals, uh, like ever since New England District Champs has been a thing, and they've mm-hmm. won, I think, all but one of them. So, um, yeah. A few, people, a few people in the chat have said that 195 will be at New England nice. Champs. Cool. Um, yeah, Sandra um, posted a video, I think, of them winning um, the the uh, chairman's award and it was like then there was an overlay of kind of i think it must have been a a student who was in the chairman's team a few years ago and is now like a mentor on the on the um on the team and in the chairman's uh department it was just, it was it was pretty cool so uh very cool so an interesting thing about 195 just real quick is that like there's such a they're like 254 this year right we're so, so many people are so just like on both sides of the of the are they underrated or are they overrated spectrum of things right and it's like to me like they have three blue banners and a chairman's award like i mean i know chairman's is a color towards robot but i mean just because they weren't number one seed doesn't mean they're not a phenomenal team and, and doing well and yeah they started out a little bit rough uh, but how do you not get props to this team for, for being incredible uh, and, and their consistency that they've had all year? Like, to me, I, I think it's crazy uh, that people aren't considering them an elite team this year because I really think that they, they've they earned that spot. And, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're ELO, you know, yes, it's a little bit lower. Um, I mean, ELO is kind of all off the charts on the top 25 uh, this week. But uh, t- to me, they're a team that just has gotten better and they look, I think, really good. And I don't quite understand why some people are – our naysayers on this team because to me, I, I, I think they're the real deal. I'm not only just this year, but I mean, like I said, like they've been in, they've been in the finals at New England district championship for oh, yeah. so many years. Like it's not even just a powerhouse this year. They're they're I think a team that flies under the radar in that discussion. When you, when you talk about that, um, that maybe not in the limelight so much, but they're just incredible year after year after year. Yeah. All right. Last one for another break. And that last one is, 3075 from Had Hasharan Ha Merkaz, Israel. Um, in Hadarim High School, it's Hadrim. Uh, with an overall record of 38 and 21, they were the winners of the Israel District Championship. So, taking home a win at the number two event, um, uh, this new team in the top 25 this season would take home uh, a finalist medal at the number three event. Um, and at the Israel District Championship this past weekend, they would finish sixth and be selected to the number four event, playing nine matches in the playoffs, taking it to three every round. Mm-hmm. Um, this alliance would take the win, but they're currently sitting first in all of Israel after all of that. Um, and 3075 will be playing in Detroit, looking to make the Israel District proud. So, congrats to Hadream Dream Team um, on a great season and, and good luck in Detroit. So uh, I do like 3075. I think their alliance partner personally, uh, 4338, is a better robot. Um, so I was a little surprised uh, to see them uh, where they were. Um, I think they fall somewhere maybe in the lower half of the top 25. Definitely still a great team. Please don't get me wrong on that. Uh, but uh, I was a little surprised to see them as, as high up as they were. Israel always comes through strong uh, with voting uh, when, when they come through. And, and I think, you know, just looking at the, the votes and where the total 3075 just appeared on so many teams lists, not always as a number one team, but they appeared enough where they just got that consistency and momentum. I think uh, put them up here, still a phenomenal team, uh, still looking good, but uh, I, I still think 4338, um, who is also on the top 25, uh, to me is a little bit better of a team than 3075 in regards to robot performance. Mm-hmm. 
All right. Cool. Looks like Time. we got some uh, housekeeping to do here, boys. <laughs> yes, we do. All right, so let's go ahead and draw for the uh, FTA uh, bear pin. Uh, and once again, FTA bear was the key. We're going to have two winners once again. So please, please, please make sure first name, last name, mailing address, zip code, city, all this. I mean, mailing address includes all that, but I still have to lay it out. Yeah, apparently. So, uh, so uh, with that said, our first winner is going to be uh, Angel, M-I-R-67894. Uh, Angel, I hope it's the person I've actually been talking to on Facebook uh, recently. Uh, so if it is, congratulations. If not, congratulations anyways. Uh, by the way, we've had a lot of non-subs winning, so it's not always rigged, by the way. Uh, <laughs> and our next winner, uh, speaking about rigging, though, is going to be <laughs> Anthony, 3175. Multiple winners, multiple times. Uh, so you get the uh, bear pin. Uh, and thanks for uh, subbing because... Uh, I think you've won about at least uh, six or seven giveaways already. Okay, so, so he's, he's been joining me on the blacklist, apparently. So. Yeah, something <laughs> like Yeah, soon, soon. Uh, but congratulations to both of those uh, winners as well. He's won like an epic amount of giveaways. It's crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to do start the giveaway, the second giveaway here, so then we can kind of do our stereotypes in our, yeah. our second discussion? Yep, we can do that. Uh, so I'll give Nick a second to reset there, but we'll talk about... Uh, the time of flight sensor uh, from our friends playing with fusion.com. Uh, so once again, make sure you uh, check this out uh, to get the time of flight sensor. It is pretty cool. Uh, and we're starting to get some feedback from teams that I've heard, uh, which is pretty sweet, but millimeter resolution up to four meter range with a full enclosure, integrated cover glass and supports a wide voltage range. So very cool stuff. And if you're interested in uh, winning, uh, this, you're just going to type in uh, PW Fusion. It's been kind of the keyword they'd like to use. Uh, to remind you, go check out playingwithfusion.com. So we'll do the drawing for that after the number one team. So make sure you stick around even after all the drama because uh, there's going to be some interesting drama in the probably the actually all top five really uh, could really go either way. So, But make sure you stick around after number one as we'll be drawing for the time of flight sensor. All right, so this week's um, this actually was going to be stereotypes for uh, maybe next week heading into championship. Yeah, as a, as a friendly reminder. But considering what um, some topic of discussion, which I don't check Chief, Chief Delphi really all that much, so Tyler can maybe talk about that. But uh, we decided to bump it up in the rotation a little bit. So uh, I guess we'll watch stereotypes first, then we'll kind of talk about the issue at hand. So go ahead. Robot! Robot coming through! Can we just be real for a second? What about yelling robot is gracious or professional? When you're in the grocery store with a cart full of groceries and you're behind somebody that you want to get around, do you yell, cart! Cart! When you're at the mall and you're walking behind slow people and you want to get through, do you yell, person! Person! No, you don't. Robot! All right, so, um, yeah, don't do this. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, so there's an interesting thread on Cheat Delphi. Um, just that, that's posted. It says it's 2019. Why are we still shouting robot? And uh, yeah, I you know I I was at Seven Rivers and there was just people screaming at the top of their lungs. I mean, at least this team I think had a bicycle bell, which I thought was cool. I'm fine with that, right? But then they also screamed robot, and I'm like, really? Like, can we just? I don't get it. Like, there, there's so many different ways to do it. And, and Seven Rivers is very congested in the pits, right? So no doubt, and there's a safety thing, but it's really not that hard to put somebody in front of you and just say, hey, you know, excuse us, you know, and you can say robot, I think is okay, but the scream it, like I, I heard teams still doing, uh, I think it's gotten way less, right? Can we agree that it's gotten way Absolutely. less? Absolutely. I'm not, I, you know, I, I, we competed at Finger Lakes and Long Island. I don't think I heard it once, to be honest. Wow. I really, I really haven't. <laughs> People are a lot, you know, like, hey, excuse me, can you guys watch out? We're coming through. Like, and no one's just like sneak up behind you and screaming robot, you know, right into your ear, which was always the, the, the pet peeve of that whole thing. I prefer to just sneak up behind people and just whisper it instead. But robot. so when I was, when I was at South Florida, <laughs> when I was at South Florida, a team was coming back to their pit. They had two judges at the entrance to their pit talking to talking to students and the drive team was coming through yelling robot at like while the judges were standing right there and it was just like it just it was just i don't know it was just really disappointing and mm. i think it's 
I think we've had this discussion before multiple times, probably. And a lot of times we say is the people that are doing this usually aren't part of this community, you know, like, yeah. aren't, you know, like aren't watching the show, aren't on Chief Delphi. Like they just, you know, I don't know. Like, it's just so annoying and it's so stupid and just stop. <laughs> like, just stop. Just the, the uh, excuse me, we're coming through is like so much better and so much more effective. I, you know, I'm not sure if first is ever, I don't remember. Like, I feel like they have said something about this in the past, but then I'm like, I can't recall what it was, but it'd be nice just to have a reminder from first, maybe that gives yeah. some clarification yeah. uh, on something like that. And just, just remind teams like, you know, Hey, there's no need to yell at, here's some alternatives you can do. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you can even do something funny out of that. Like, uh, I, uh, just uh, looking at the Chief Delphi thread, and Ryan uh, Donio from 1720 says, we bought a bicycle bell and a bicycle squeeze horn uh, for our cart. Most adults seem to dislike it, and the kids love it. So, <laughs> uh, Yeah, like, that's a, so like, like, I don't whatever. mind that. That's, like, kind of, like, there's a canal where we live, and people bike and walk, and, like, when we, when you go by on your bike, you're supposed to say, like, on your left, or, you know, if you have a bell or a horn, you can do that so people can hear you. Like, I don't really have an issue with that, because it's, you know, there's only a certain decibel level, and I don't yeah. know. Uh, Caltrain says Frank did a blog about it last year. So I, I, yeah, I, I thought I remembered something, but I, I couldn't exactly. So, yeah, so thank you. For hopefully my, has helped. We need another one. <laughs> yes. Come on, Frank. Till, till it's no more. Right. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.